Well, hello everybody, welcome back to episode 80, my last play of Pillars of Eternity. I'm Abadopia, and this guy looks like he's trying to get a mob together to take out Necromancers, I believe, or An Animancers. So we're going to have a little chat with him. Because, like, are they getting a group together to get into people, or are they really bad? We don't know. What are you doing out here? The jester's at the crowd with buzzers with anger chatter, trying to get folk to see reason. We're in the midst of crisis. Instead of purging the notorious forces from our city, the duke is granting Animancy's dangerous liberties. What do you know about Animancy? It's the study and manipulation of essence, which any sane person will tell you is the pure view, pure view of the gods. The Andalans at least had the sense to outlaw it, which is the only good thing you can say about them. Wow. You seem very racist as guy does. It's uh, not like magic chanting or the soul reading those sippers do. It's been around since ancient Iguodian times, which is why you see Animantis tr tinkering with old Iguodian artifacts. That's what he is, isn't it? Oh, she. You, I think you're a he. Kenan raises a fist to cough discreetly into it. Half truth all, but he's an enthusiastic performer. I'll give him that. Shakes his head. Trouble is the Animancers got no idea what half those artifacts actually do. Not that they'll admit it. Our effort friend is correct about one thing at least. Tell me about the dozen. I'd like to know more about the fine spirit. Tell me about the dozen. He taps his chest. We're an organisation of interested citizens who want to free the Fires Bay from the dangerous influence of Animancers and the tyranny of the Astrocrats who support them. We also consider ourselves a military of sorts, seeing as the Crucible Knights are little more than a flock of preying nobles in training these days. Just like a military, the dozens expect the, do the dozens are set for the training and the discipline and the code of honour. Just like a military, the dozens. Except for the training, got no training and no discipline and the honour of code. His eyes gleam, and we're always looking to expand. The more people see things our way, the better for the state of the country. You have any interest in hearing more? Stop by Almond's Den. Oh, okay, that den was on the map, wasn't it? Sometime. The expedition hall. Uh, a lot of free thinkers in there can set straight all the nonsense the nobles and the animators want you to believe. Might even be some paid work there for motivated types. No more about the Fiersberg. This is the capital of the Free, Palada and the Draywood. We started out as the capital of Aaron Colony, but we booted the Fasten Scepters from these lands 150 years ago. Wow. These days we're, we're a major port receiving trade and visitors from all over the world, but we, some of us anyway, strive to hold on to the pioneering spirits that earned us our freedom as a century and a half ago. So divided into five districts. Copperland, uh, Copper Lane, sorry. First Fires, Alden Gift, uh, Brackenbury. For some reason I want to read that as Bankruptcy, I don't know why. And Heritage Hill. He ticks each off on a, a calloused finger. Okay, tell me about Copper Lane. Lane. This here is Copper Lane. He taps a scruff of boot on the Copper Stones. Copper, cobblestones. It's primarily a market district, but you've also got the exhibition hall directly north of here where you can join treks into the wilds. Hmm, that sounds interesting. So the hall gets treks into the wild. And it's also where my fellow dozen martyrs and I tend to meet up with the other concerned citizens. He points to so basically there's this there's quest there for for some money and get stronger. He points a long doom building west and north of your position, and the hall of the revealed mysteries are in place. You ask me? Eerie place. But they've got the biggest library in the Draywood, so he probably wouldn't go there. Yep, uh, what did I say? Ken laughs. Aaron, indeed. It, it might be less so if more kin stepped inside. Perhaps we ought to visit Aritopia and see just what mysteries are revealed. Yeah, I knew he wanted to go there. Uh, tell me about uh, uh, bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah, Brackenberry. Burberry. A noise of disc disgusted rattles in his throat. The nobility that didn't sail back to Aradon stayed there. Most of the families there traced their lineage back to the old period times. Other than a lot of has been nobility, you've got Hardest House, where Lady Webb and her spies operate. Oh, that's who we need, isn't it? Wasn't it her? Operating Bank and um, Brackenberry Samner. 
the main cesspool of Adam and Mercy in the city. You split on the cobblestone. He spits. Tell me about the first fires. That's where the revolution started. Hence the name. Uh, these days it's overrun with politi politicals, politicians sorry, and panderers. But we take it back someday. But we, we will take it back someday. That's where you'll find the Jewel Palace. Or, no, Ducal Palace. Pa palace, not Paris. Palace. The Valadin Embassy and Crucible Keep. He shakes his head. The Crucible Knights were the original freedom fighters in Defiance Bay. But now they're just strutting peacocks with their eyes on fancy titles and their heads up their horses. Wow. They were original freedom fighters. Hmm. There's an old temple of Wikipedia, Wuggadikik, <laughs> there too. He, We kept it real nice for her, he winks. In other words, you probably messed it up. Tell me about Orphan's Gift. Got the name because it was a wet was a wetland that was drained back in imperial days. Now it's a seedy district district populated by sailors, common folks and more than a few folks. But it's a fun place too if you know where to look. He winks and elbows you. Look for a place called the Salty Mass. When you're there, other than that it's mostly warehouses and abandoned homes. Tell me about Heritage Hill. He shivers. It used to be one of the more prestige districts in the city. Heroes, the revolution claim plots up, up there, next to an ancient Ewidian tower and a city cemetery. Had the best views in Defiance Bay. It attracts richer types these days, lots of unmancy uh, patrons, he spits. He glances at the crowd and lowers his voice. You wouldn't have heard, but something happened over there a couple of months ago. The authorities sealed it off and they're keeping their mouth shut. But mark my words, I miss, it. I miss it to blame. Wow, never mind, let's talk about something else. Do you want to know? I want to say farewell. Caramba, any of you want to chat? I miss this experiment, make a little girl kill herself. Wow. Okay, we're well, just going to leave the angry mob. There's anything up here we can... Hey. What? Okay, everyone. Ready when you are. Only the best soldiers get to patrol the palace. We're responsible for the safety of every person in the city. Yeah, you have a little angry mob right there. I guess Tetlon's just screaming and shouting that I see anything wrong yet, but The goose and the fox. Have a look and see what the inn looks like. We're going to use it a bit while we're in the CR window to try and go all the way back to the waiting place. Hmm. Ooh, what's this? This stelgan pelt sorry, is thick with dust and moths. The, the plaque below the beast reads Manifolds 2682. Hmm. As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this man's soul. Voices from his past seem to call out to you. Oh, it's so, so much of them, isn't it? <clears throat> you see a half consumed ale slosh its way across the distance to his mouth, spilling across the stains of food long past, glazed eyes glazed at the brawl across the room, gaining fever as the fight extends through the room. Another ale he murmurs to the bartender, downing his drink and turning towards the wall, he pulls a picture from his pocket, a painting of a young child, all brown hair and green eyes, and holds it above the candle. It does not burn. Uh, uh, Alice. Later he begins to sing, the bar a mess of broken chairs and wounded pride, and they all listen for a moment before continuing their drinks. Swift conversa conversations, his arc is felt through the room. His sad story remain reminds them of their sad stories. When he finishes singing, a uh, silence hangs in the air, plaudible among the smoke and the sweat, and the yeasty smell of beer-infused exhaler. Uh, 
He is the first to break this silence, ordering a round of ale for the room. The general din of conversation sparks and resumes, but the mirth now is tempted with far off memories and thoughts. Hmm. I just realised you're walking around with a big stick that's basically got fire on the end. You know, you could set something on fire. Welcome to the Goose and Fox. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. What's this? Earl of them looks and um, was that immaterially from the canvas. Huh. Ooh. I'm not sure what the, how this game works 100% with the steam. I think sometimes they go berserk, sometimes they don't. So. Yeah, they have. That's why I just saved. Just to make sure. <clears throat> so yes, there is stealing in it. <clears throat> it seems I'm so far between, I forget about it. Margaret's fire cast light in dark. Can we see it? Okay, that's going to be something interesting. A dragon is outlined in charcoal, pencil, the thick jagged lines, and the faint smell of sulfur suggests that this artifact completed his sketch in a hurry. Cliff Dragon, White March, uh, 2685. A simple test. That's settled. Hmm. I think we'll probably chat with these next episode. We've only got like a minute or two left this episode, but we'll have a look around here. Oh, this looks like it's a private area. Painting the spritz glathone, ruins and caverns, bears the rough brush strokes of talented amateur. Hmm. Oh, there's a door here, I didn't realise. Dwarf and all in a debate philosophy on the other side of the curve. Okay. Okay, let's say even see if we can have a chat with him. I don't know how long this conversation is going to be, so I don't plan to do an episode today to tomorrow. So if it's too much conversation, we will just reload before we talk to him. As you near the field of vibrant history, cause, oh, it's one of these uh, voices from his past. There, yeah, that should be fine, shouldn't it? For the last two minutes. So we'll read this and then we'll save and end the episode. You see. This is Brad Forrest. You see a mud so clearing rain falling to the ground in large drops. This man is lying on his back in the muck, his hands holding open the maw of an enormous stelogar that stands over him, its front paws on its chest. I don't know what stelogar is, but some kind of animal. The heavy rain falls over them, playing counterpoint to the grunts made by the opponents. Dead skeleton litter the ground around them, and the man's body shows signs of difficult battle. Are they, are they little like, goblin things I've been fighting recently? Is that what they are? Maybe. His clothing is torn, hanging in scraps in some places. Bites and scratches cover his arms and legs. A huge gash cuts, cuts across his forehead. Blood and water mixing as they run down his face and drip into the mud. Takes all the man's effort to keep the beast's jaws from clamping down. Okay, beasts are not really beasts, are they? The man looks around wildly until his gaze finally lands on a large axe lying barely within arm's reach behind his head. The rain slowly covering it with grim and muddy water. He looks at the Skelligar and then back at his axe, grim determination in his face. His arms are shaking and it seems he will not be able to hold the beast back for much longer. He takes a deep breath and wraps his right hand around the Skelligan bottom jaw and then lets go with his left, freeing the top of his head. Uh, the skeleton's mouth snaps shut on his right hand Ow. as his left shoots out above his head and grabs the handle of his axe. The skeleton grinds its teeth and pulls back, trying to free itself from uh, his grip, blood dripping from its mouth. 
onto its face with a, uh, onto his face with a grunt that quickly becomes a bellow of pain. The man pulls his right hand down, uh, bringing the beast's head closer to him, swinging the axe around as he does. The blade of the weapon pierces the skeleton's neck and it yelps, its mouth popping open as it tries to step backwards out of the uh, off uh, the tries to step backward off off the man. Before his mangled hand can lose its grip, the man pulls and twists as hard as he can, trying to get the beast on the ground, using the stalagon resistance to pull himself into a sitting position. He br it brings the, the axe down on its neck again and again, and one final time as its head, as its uh, head, well, uh, final time as its head and his hand, Olga, oh, simultaneously come free. The head flies from its grip as he thrusts his hand behind his back to brace himself as he falls. As his hand hits the ground and his full weight lands on it, a second bellow of pain erupts from his mouth. Breathing heavily, he brings his now mangled hand up to uh, up to access the dam assess the damage. The little finger is gone. Ow! Lost somewhere in the mud. The, uh, the two fingers next to it are twisted, oh, ah, yow. broken and torn, barely attached to his hand by small bits of flesh. He sighs, grabbing both dangling fingers with his left hand. He grits his teeth and pulls. Oh, sugar, he yanked his fingers off. Oh, I can remember. That's, oh. So he killed it, didn't he, basically. Head flies from the grip of his thrust as his hand behind the back to brace himself. Yep. One final time, as the head and his hand simultaneously come free. So his hand comes free as the head does, because he, he takes the head off, and of course it loses grip and it frees his hand. Wow, he survived though. And with that Galarian tale, we're going to save and end the episode here. So if you want to put a comment, you can. If you want to put a like, that'd be amazing. Please put likes, and please share, share, share. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and then hit the little bell. And also check other things out on my channel. This is Babtopia. Saying bye for now, everyone. Have a great, amazing day. Bye.